Hi, my name is David Zinger, and I want to really welcome you today to a focused dialogue on engagement and happiness. I'm so thrilled to have uh, Alex Kerouf from uh, Denmark here with us today to talk about happiness. He's the Chief Happiness Officer and has done tremendous work on happiness for, uh, I would say, before it was popular. Uh, Alex, welcome. Thank you so much, David. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I know we have a slide up on your background, but what 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 steered you in the direction of uh, happiness and work? Oh yeah, well, I, I used to be in the IT business. Um, I had my own uh, IT company that I co-founded with two other people in Copenhagen way back in 1997. And and when we started this IT company, our sort of our number one goal was to make it a happy workplace. I mean, sure, we wanted to you know have a profit and have great clients and so on, but more than anything else, we wanted a happy workplace where people could have fun. We ran that company for five years. It became quite successful. And then we sold it in 2002. And I sort of you know, stopped at that point and asked myself, what is, what is my vision? What is my passion? You know, what do I want to contribute to the world? And, and I realized that what I was really passionate about was not IT solutions anymore. It was this idea of happiness at work. How do you create really happy workplaces where people just love to work? And uh, so I, co I founded this, this, my current company, uh, which is called Woohoo Inc. and it's not Woohoo. The company's called Woohoo. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, just picking up the phone is 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 a hoot. Um, I uh, founded the company in in 2003. In fact, uh, May 1st, 2003, we had our first paying client. So as of yesterday, we've been doing this for nine years now, uh, making people happy at work. We do speeches, workshops, consulting work. Uh, for workplaces all around the world. Well, con congratulations! And so, so the primary uh, focus in the the audience is is around the wor world of employee engagement. And the way I see engagement, mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit of a buzzword. I I just define it as connection, connection to our work, connection to each other, mm -hmm. connection to results, connections to customers. Before we launch into happiness and the connection between happiness and engagement and work, what engages you currently most with your work, Alex? <laughs> I, you know what? I, what really gives me a major kick is is you know seeing that the work we do has an impact. In fact, we we sat down last year to to sort of you know formalize our company values and vision. And our our vision is uh, you know it, it's a world where happiness at work is the rule and not the exception. Um, and and we define ten values and sort of our most important value is uh, we optimize for impact. You know, we want to make a difference in everything we do. Um, so when I can, you know, when I hear back from a client that, you know, we had a workshop we, with you three years ago, we're still using the principles. It still helps us make, uh, you know, make uh, the company more effective. But when I hear from people who have read our books or read the website, um, I just love that kind of thing. I, I got an email from a lady saying, you know, she had been considering quitting her really crappy job for ages. And finally, she got off the courage to do it. And, um, and and that was because of one of our articles, and that that's the kind of thing that, in, that really engages me. So really seeing the, the results and the, and the elements of what you're doing. So the big question in the short period of time we have is what is the relationship between work happiness and engagement? And if I can, uh, you know, in doing some research to, to interview and looking at your material again, I've been looking at it for years, uh, mm -hmm. I was really struck by by your your talk about the connection between happiness, results, and relationship. Because I think so often yeah. people think as happiness is something extra and outside, and oh my God, I'm too busy for happiness. But you really <laughs> seem to have weaved it right right with results and relationships. I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, I, I think I think the, the two major sources of happiness in the workplace are results and relationships. You know, when you do good work that you can be proud of. That you, that work that is meaningful to you that makes us happy, and also good relationships. You know, when you like your coworkers, you like your boss, you like your employees, you like your clients, for that matter. Uh, those are the two major sources of, of happiness, uh, positive emotion in the workplace. And and what we know now from from you know decades of research in psychology, sociology, and neurology is that happiness has a major impact on our performance at work. Um, and when we are happy. We, do, we are more productive, we're more creative, we're, we're more helpful towards other people, we deliver better customer service, happy people are better managers and so on. So, so very simply put, we are more effective and more successful when we like what we do. 
which of course goes you know completely against the old idea that work you know is, is all about hard work it's all about effort right it's all about suffering and the more you suffer the more effective you will be and of course this is completely wrong yeah, and, and I mean, Tony Shea from Zappos did, did a whole bunch of work on happiness, and, and you've predated him by, by many years in, in what you're doing and, and how you're looking at that. And, and you would say the Scandinavians are one of the few to have a language that, that has a word for happiness at work. I wonder if yes. you could tell us a little bit about that. Sure. It, it, the word in Danish is arbeitsglue. And, and this is going to sound really weird, of course, to the rest of the world. Uh, but arbeit in Danish means work, and glue is gladness, happiness. So Arbeitsglue is literally just work happiness. And, and the, the cool thing about, is that is, uh, about this is that this word exists only in the Scandinavian languages. We've checked, and there's no word for this in, in any other language in the world except Danish, Finnish, Swedish, and Norwegian. Um, and this is not a coincidence. There is a long standard, you know, decades old tradition in Scandinavia for focusing on happy workplaces. Uh, this is something we've, we've been, been doing for 40 or 50 years now. And this is something they do not have in the rest of the world, this focus on uh, creating great workplaces. Yeah, and you make a, I was watching your uh, TED Talk uh, recently, you made a nice mm -hmm. distinction between satisfaction and happiness, because I think some people oh, yeah. would just equate those two things together. Yes, so that's, that's, that's actually one of, the, one of the, the, the you know, misguided preconceptions we're fighting, is that it's about employee satisfaction. Um, and, and of course, you know the, the sources of satisfaction. Are you satisfied with your work? The, the sources of that are there's stuff like you know your salary, bonuses, perks, your job title, promotions, raises, that kind of thing. Uh, those are the things that make us satisfied. But those are not the things that make us happy. And 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 the research confirms this again. Um, and and the thing is that the, the, those benefits I talk about, you know, being more productive and more creative and and, and so on. You don't get those benefits from being satisfied. You know, overall, I'm very satisfied with my job. You get those benefits when you're happy right here and right now. When you're sitting at your desk today going, oh, my God, I love my job. It's awesome. That's when you're more productive and more creative and so on. So, so, and there's nothing wrong with, with, with job satisfaction in and of itself. It's just that it shouldn't be the major focus of our careers and work lives and workplaces. We should really focus on happens because that is where we get all those performance benefits and that's when the company makes more money. Yeah, and, and it seems to me that, that, that satisfaction is a fairly anemic measure of, of how we are at work and when it's reduced to a biannual or an annual survey that we call engagement, it's got very little to do with happiness and engagement because <laughs> those seem to be things of the day-to-day -day and the, the moment-to-moment. -moment. Right now I have... Uh, exactly. One of your websites up as, as a chief happiness officer and, and you have a ton of excellent uh, blog posts and articles and resources on there. Um, how long have you been at that? And uh, if people go there, what, what should they be looking for? Well, I started blogging in, in 2002, believe it or not. I mean, everybody and their you know, dog was getting a blog at the time, so I thought, what the hell, I'll get one too. Um, and I've and, and been blogging ever since, and the blog has been getting really, really popular. I think we have about a million visitors a year. Uh, which is which is you just just awesome, um, and and on there there are you know we have different categories. We focus a lot on I think our main focus is, is still what can I do and you know what can I do tomorrow to make tomorrow a great work day because happiness at work is something we do. It's something we do together every single day. I mean we create a happy work day today, or we don't, and then we do it again tomorrow, or we don't. And it's not like you can sit around and just wait for somebody else to come and make you happy. So that's really the main thing we have on there is, you know, tons of tips and videos and articles. What can I do tomorrow to, to be happier and, and more engaged to work? Actually, I'd like to ask, to ask you, David, because you, you know, I, was, I really wanted to ask you this. How do you see the connection between happiness at work and engagement? Because I've been thinking about this a lot, and I'm not sure I have a clear answer. Well, you know, I, th I think there's a very, very strong connection, and, and the engagement tends to contribute to happiness or well-being, and uh, well-being or happiness contributes to engagement. Uh, I, originally, when I created a pyramid of engagement that had ten sources, happiness was one of them. I've, I've since changed the label to well-being with happiness embedded in that. Um, and yet I think sometimes the danger of that is that then people, people uh, don't, don't look closely and see 
the key component of, of happiness in there. And, you know, I, I think we're beyond, for, for most people in the field, uh, thinking of happiness as something fluffy or something extra or soft skill or something. But I still think in, yeah. in many people in the workplace, they're still equating happiness as something extra or frilly or whatever. And I, I think that's, yeah. uh, that's doing a disservice to an experience that we spend so much of our time at. Exactly. It sounds like we agree that happiness and engagement are it's not it's not like it's the same thing, but they're very closely tied together. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I, I think you know when we need to engage with with our, our sense of well being and happiness, and and that's it's bi directional. I see all engagement yeah. as bi directional. We engage yeah. with our work as our work engages us. We we, yeah. we bring a happiness to work, and our work can make us happy. And so that yeah. bi directional element is is important. I, I liked your term that we're responsible for our own happiness happiness, but our managers and organizations are also responsible for setting up the conditions. Yes, exactly. I mean, as a manager, you can create conditions where it's almost impossible to be happy at work, and, and let's face it, a lot of managers do. Uh, but also, again, as a, as, a, as a manager, as a workplace, you can create conditions where it's very, very easy to be happy. However, no matter how good those conditions are, you can never, you can never make, you can, can never force people to be happy. Uh, uh, that's just not the way it works. People, uh, people have to want to be happy within those conditions. And so, I, I think they, so, sorry about they, that, but usually yeah. happy hour is is after five o'clock, and and your, <laughs> your popular book is happy hour is nine to five. Uh, yeah, and it's happy hours. It's it's hour after hour with that. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, the, yeah, there, there, there's a famous episode of the of the Drew Carey show where they say you know. Uh, where they, they talk about uh, these people who meet at the bar and they complain about, about their jobs and they complain about their spouses and they complain about everything, and that's called happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I thought, you know, what what if happy hour wasn't from five to six at the local bar? What was what if happy hour was you know nine to five? What if, if you actually could wake up in the morning and be excited about going to work? And and I think that's where most people should be, not necessarily every single day, but but most days. And that's a book that's in a number of languages and accessible from a number of resources from your website and other sources, and even some of it's freely available. If, if people people are starving for money, they can always read the book yeah. uh, online with that. Is, yeah, the, the English translation is, is available completely free on, a, on the blog on positivesharing.com if, if anyone wants to read there. And, and if, if we go back even further, not only do you, do you have a book, you have a manifesto on happiness. And I've always, sure. I've always liked the people at the Change This site, and it's a, it's a delightful manifesto because it's short. Thank you. It's got, uh, I think, what, about 25 points in the manifesto? Yeah, right? very good. Uh, exactly. what, what, what stands out in your mind right now out of, out of those items in the manifesto that seems to be uh, either what's really challenging workplaces or what seems to be improving for workplaces? I think I think it really, really comes for me. It always comes back to the same thing, which is that my happiness at work is my responsibility, and and I, you know, if if I want to be happy at work, I have to start for myself. Not that I have to go it alone, okay? Uh, it's just that I have to be responsible for my own work life and for my own life in in general. And and one area I see right now that's really challenging for people is uh, if you have this horrible job. Can you still quit? You know, in these uncertain economic times with the financial crisis and so on, can you quit your job? And and I, I see I see, right now I see a lot of people staying on in jobs they absolutely hate, um, and and I think I think that's horrible. I think this is this is something if you know we know from from, from the research that uh, hating your job can make you sick. It can it can ruin your career. It can even ruin your relationship with your partner. It, it can, in the end, kill you. So, so I, I, you know, I always encourage people to, if, if, you know, if you really hate your job, um, quit, move on. Um, it, it's, it's sometimes it's, it is the only way, even, even in these times. Yeah, and, and you're not minimizing the economic currency, but there's a currency of happiness and well-being. If we don't attend to that currency, as you say at the, at the end of that first page in the manifesto, because the future belongs to the happy, and, yeah, and you would exactly. also say the present does too. I, th I think it does, and the thing is, when when, you know, when people are considering, should I quit? What they what they really focus on is, you know, if I quit, what will I lose? And you may lose, you know, you'll you lose your salary, and you may lose your health care benefits, and you may lose your, you know, 
uh, pension and and your you know coworkers and so on. But the, the the question people never ask themselves is if I stay at this job that I absolutely hate, what might that cost me? Uh, and I think I think you're not you're not having a balanced balanced look at it unless you also can consider that question. And and in the end, staying at that horrible job that you absolutely hate it, it can kill you. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you have you have a number of rules of productivity, and I, I, particularly in the field of engagement, I get so frustrated with our field when we do these biannual or annual measures, and somehow believe that we capture engagement that shifts wildly from a day to day. And I, I love your point number one. Your productivity will vary wildly from day to day, and this is normal. And and what yes. role does happiness have in in, in that wild productivity? Um, I, I think, I, well, one way I apply it is that, you know, when I come into work in the morning, um, I, don't, I don't necessarily go by my to-do list. You know, it's not like I start working on the top of the list and then go to the next item. The next item is to sort of stop and ask myself, you know, what do I feel like doing today? Do I feel like, you know, tackling emails? Do I feel like calling some clients? Do I feel like writing a new blog post? And then I do that. Um, and, and and some days I will come into work and I will feel like doing absolutely nothing. And on those days I will go home again or go do something else. Uh, because, you know, why hang out at work if you're not getting anything done anyway? And, and, and my point is this is normal. I mean, this is, this is uh, for knowledge workers where your, your productivity depends on your creativity, you know, on your, you know, uh, ability to think new things, on your ability to write or whatever. There are some days you will do great work, and there are some there are some days you will do no work, and this is completely normal. Okay, well, we don't have too much time left, and I'm pulling this question out of left field. It just kind of occurs to me. The, the statistics suggest that we now you talked about knowledge workers that we're we're at a, a billion mobile workers. What's mm -hmm. what's the potential or the challenge uh, for happiness for people who are mobile workers? Any thoughts about that? Yes. Uh, one challenge for mobile workers is relationships. I mean, if you work out of this one office in this department, and then you'll you'll have coworkers, you have a boss, and you have you know strong relationships, people who know what you're doing, who can give you encouragement, criticism, praise, advice, uh, companionship. And as a mobile worker, that becomes a lot harder. Um, the, so that's a challenge. And and as a mobile worker, you may have to find your relationships somewhere else. Um, Maybe in networks or, or you know knowledge groups or whatever. However, uh, the cool thing from from all mobile workers is that they often get to choose. They have more of an influence over what they do, so they have more of a chance of picking you know uh, uh, interesting tasks, challenging tasks, meaningful tasks. Um, it, however, if only if they remember to do so. Uh, so, so in some ways, it's a, there's a little bit of a bigger challenge on the relationship, and yet the upside is you, you've got a little bit more direct control of how you move through the results and what you're trying to achieve along the way with that. Yes, and you, and you have more freedom over how you work and where you work and when you work, which is, which is fantastic. I mean, a lot of mornings I work out of a cafe instead of going to our office, which, is, you know, which I like doing. Yeah, I guess one one final thought. You know, sometimes I think we equate uh, happiness with everybody wearing clown noses and jumping up with joy, and you know, wild on airlines or whatever. Any thoughts about, uh, for lack of a better term, this is my term, quiet happiness? Uh, you know, that that happiness that, that just kind of resonates inside. And yes, it can be shared, but but sometimes just a happiness we feel uh, as we're working, and and no one else may almost notice it. Is is that any thoughts about that? I, th I think yes, and, and, and we've got to remember that happiness looks different on different people, right? I mean, some people, when they're happy, you can instantly tell, and they'll be jumping and shouting and singing and laughing. That's, that's fantastic. And other people, you know, when they're really happy and engaged and fulfilled, they'll just be sitting quietly at their desk doing their work, feeling fantastic. And this is exactly the way it should be. And you cannot equate happiness at work with sort of all of the, you know, the, 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 the let's say the wild stuff that you mentioned, the clown noses, the partying and the dancing and so on, that's, that's only one element. And some people will derive a lot of happiness for, from that, whereas other people will derive most of their happiness from just sitting at their desk, doing their jobs, knowing that they do it really, really well. And we've got to remember, I think this is the main point here, everybody's different. And everybody's, everybody's different. different. And, and if it, we try to treat everybody the same, we'll make a lot of people unhappy.
Yeah, and so uh, one of the last uh, screenshots I have here is your Woohoo site, and I I I, I was watching your uh, your oh, TEDx okay. talk, and I, I, I actually showing you at work. I got a screenshot of you at work, and and you're happy as you're you're presenting it, and you're even showing some pictures of of people coming yeah, yeah. to the conference who who, who may yeah. not be quite so happy with that. Uh, yeah, so I people just want to correct you here that it's not Woohoo, it's Woohoo. Woohoo! Oh, I don't I don't give enough <laughs> emphasis. It's all in the emphasis, right? Yeah, exactly. Woohoo! Did I get it? There you, there you go. <laughs> gotta, gotta get that voice lifted up, and you got, you got the audience engaged. So, if anyone's unfamiliar with Alex, I, I highly recommend uh, going to Positive Sharing and looking at the blog and coming to this site and watching the video. Or if you type his name into uh, YouTube, there's a number of videos of you presenting or whatever, and probably even much richer experience would be to get Alex or one of the members of his team. Uh, to come out and spend some time with you. Uh, just I as think we, that's a fantastic we, idea. Just as we're closing, any last thought? If, say, if someone's listening to this early in the morning, of um, something they should consider or think about or do to increase their happiness for the day. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think we all we keep coming back to this one tip. And and this is probably one of the most basic findings of positive psychology, which we use for the, as the foundation of all of our work, is that. The best way to become happy yourself is to make somebody else happy. This is a con con quite consistent finding in, in these studies is that whenever you do something for yourself, that makes you a little happier. But when you do something for somebody else, it makes you a lot happier. So, so my challenge to people listening to this is um, what could you do today to make somebody else happy at work? Uh, a coworker, a client, a vendor, uh, your boss, an employee, uh, somebody, some completely random person at work. Could you do somebody something to make somebody else happy at work? You know, praise people, do a random act of workplace kindness, whatever. But could you do one thing today to make somebody else happy at work? And I can promise you, it'll come right back to you. Oh, well said. And, and really, some people start to say that stress is a staff infection, and certainly laughter can be con <laughs> laughter can be contagious, and humor is certainly a pathway out of it. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for taking time with us and joining us today. It's really been a, a privilege.